Hi. Hello, everyone. We're back again for the second time this week mm -hmm. so far. Yep. And uh, I can already tell this is going to go down, mm -hmm. and it's not going to be pretty. Mm -hmm. We just got out of uh, Tyler Perry's uh, Single Moms Club. Mm -hmm. The fact that it has the words Tyler Perry in the title should pretty much tell you how I feel about it already. Mm -hmm. Considering how much I love their masterpiece, Temptation. Which I called one of the worst movies of last year. Mm -hmm. You liked this, didn't you? No, actually, I didn't like it. I thought it was a really bad movie. Really? Just kidding. I loved it <laughs> so much. It was such a great movie. What? Yeah. Why? It was, it was so solid. No, like, it wasn't. It had everything you'd want out of a no, movie. No, it, it, it didn't. Okay, it had, it had like six different plot lines going on for it. So? So that was a little bit difficult for movies. You can't do that. Yeah, and it didn't do it well. No, it did it very well. Why? It had six different plot lines going on, and you could see all the six different, you know, plot lines, like, intertangling, and they all, all the moms and the kids had their own issues and their own, like, struggles in life. So do most it, movies. That doesn't and, make it good. And it's just, it was, it was great. I thought just the quality of acting was what? outstanding. What? Um, Not only kids could act their way out of a paper fucking bag. They're children, Michael Medina. They're I have children. Seen, now, don't give me that bullshit excuse. <laughs> That's not that. No, that doesn't count. All right, I'm they sorry. They were they were great. No, they were um, not. They were excellent. Sometimes I, I swear to God, you say these things just to piss no, me off. No, I don't. <laughs> um, and they the moms were all great in the movie. No, they had a they very were diverse not. cast. No, they were not. They the, were goddamn stereotypes. The, the hus each the, and every the, fucking the male one of interests them. were great. Um, outstanding special mention to Tyler Perry. Um, you did not just say that yeah. sentence out loud. Uh, special mention to Tyler Perry. <laughs> I want to go see Temptation. Was it good? I haven't seen it yet. Do you have it? Do, can I borrow your DVD? You probably have the DVD, right? No, Blu-ray? Okay, we'll red box it. Um, anyway, what were you saying about the movie? <laughs> You're just poking the bear right now, aren't you? Speaking of that, okay, uh, Disney's <laughs> Bears is in theaters in a few months, and I want to go see that with you as well. Because I can't, I don't even know what your negative things you're going to say about bears. I can't even find anything negative about bears. I don't even know what you're going to say about them. That's what I'm curious about. Okay. Here's my opinion mm -hmm. about this movie. It's a bad fucking movie. I've I've yet to oddly enough find a director who's more racist than Tyler Perry. Cause more than any other director I know to see rely more on racist stereotypes, racist jokes, and quite frankly, borderline rape on a couple of occasions. Please continue. Okay. So let's get the start. Now, granted. I understand that single moms is a very delicate issue, or a difficult topic to talk about. It's not one that I personally have any real experience in. However, that being said, I don't think Tyler Perry is the one to examine that forefront. In fact, this exact same material, almost verbatim, has been done ten times better in the show Parenthood. Not even 10 times, 20 times better, because it actually had tact. It knew what he was talking about. It had genuinely good kid actors playing these parts. Like, it really knows what the fuck they're talking about and how it affects not just the kids or the parents, but everyone. It really explores that dynamic. Here it is just you got a bunch of kids who can't act their way out of a paper bag, who are doing the same three expressions as all they know how to fucking do. Like, so dialogue that is just so fucking cliche, and it's like... And I'm not saying this is something that should, that can be talked about, it should be talked about, but it needs to be handled with less overdramatic tension. Like, the motions don't feel real, they feel forced, especially towards the end where you have the woman who just randomly just shoves things off her table because that's what angry people do. And shit like that. Is she, because her son ran away. Well, I'm sorry, but 
that felt very, very forced. Like, cause it's like the, it's a cliche, I'm angry thing to do in movies. Where it's like, rawr, I'm shivering things off. It was raw emotion. It was not Tyler raw Perry. emotion. Tyler Perry is go gonna go down as one of the great directors of his generation and our generation. And he could tackle, he's he's made a lot of movies, so he's able to tackle more serious subjects. That doesn't and mean he can do them well. I, but he puts his own unique you can't, you I'm, not can't. Even, I'm not even kidding around, he's being serious. And he he's allowed to go and tackle these serious issues. No, he's not. Tyler Perry. No, yes, he's he not. The fucking Medea guy is not allowed to take yes, a more serious is. topic. He but is. he can't even do that fucking well. Oh. <laughs> And seriously, calling the Tyler Berry one of the great American, like, great act directors of our time, it's just an insult to Hollywood in general. We have actors like Martin Scorsese, Wes Anderson, very much. And Tyler Perry. I'd put him up there with the greats. Why? If there's a Mount Rushmore of great, <laughs> of great directors, Martin Scorsese, Steven Spielberg, Tyler Perry. That seems fit in my mind. Are you just like trying to poke me with no, a stick? And no, no, <laughs> I'm, 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 I, I like movies and I appreciate them for what they are. But what this is isn't very good. There's no sub, like there's no subtlety. It's literally thrown in your face so many times. There's no subtlety. There's no class. We don't get to know any of these kids other than just the random drama they thro get thrown into. So it doesn't mean anything. There wouldn't be enough time to really examine the kids. You have plenty of fucking time. You can easily cut some of the slapstick. Oh, and by the way, here's the conflicting message of the fucking movie, too, by the way. And this is pointed out in the Cinema Snob ver uh, review of this movie. I'm going to point it out, too, because it's pretty fucking obvious. Mm -hmm. The whole point we first half of the movie is you don't need a man. You can do it on your own with the help with your other sisters. And by the end of the movie, guess what? They all have a fucking man. But they don't necessarily rely on that man to help them out. They just have Except to all the men at some point have to save the girl from their kids. I think it's more just you need people to rely on and friends. But that and doesn't change the fact that the, the message strong, is so women. conflicting. It directly conflicts each other. It's saying you don't need a man, but at the end of the movie, Aaron has a man. And they all use him to help him with the parenting things. They're mm -hmm. all taking off father figure roles. That's what they all do. Maybe. Maybe. you Don't give me that maybe bullshit. You see exactly what I'm talking about. No, none of them took father figure roles except for Ex the guy that's taking the kid fishing the one time, and that's it. Well, and then you got the other, the boyfriend that's introduced to the daughter at the very but end. He just, just says hi to her at the very end. She doesn't really take a role in her big, Still, the point, her life. The, the point is just that at the end of the day, the entire message is voided because at the end of the day, Mm, they're they're not relying on each other for sisterhood. They're relying on guys. No, they're not relying on the guys at all. By the time they end, they're all stronger and more independent than they were, and more sure of themselves than they were at the start of the movie. I don't think it necessarily had anything to do with the guys. That was just kind of their different little funny love stories thrown into it. Uh, funny is not the word I would use. Uh, I would painful, think. annoying, mm -hmm. uh, aggravating at times. Uh, I'd like to cliche ridden. I'd like to point out the fact that. <laughs> Sorry. I like to point out the fact that you have a Green Lantern ring. I don't know how that's relevant to the review, but I, I want to point that out. That you're rocking a Green Lantern ring. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. And then, of course, there's the whole... So much swag. Thank you. And, again, and there was, like, the Tracy Morgan fucking subplot, which annoyed me. Because that just... It, it's the second time Tracy... Uh, fucking Tyler Perry has done this stupid mm -hmm. lesson that I hate it in Temptation. I hate it now. Which is like, if she says no the first time, she you really just need to keep trying harder. That is a horrible message! I mean, at least it wasn't go bad as Temptation was, where in Temptation, it literally re led to rape. I didn't see Temptation, but you're gonna lend me your Blu-ray copy. No, I just know you're... No, it's just but, perseverance. You just gotta keep... You gotta keep trying. No, there's a point where you say no. You say, okay, I respect that. I'm not gonna stalk you until you find me cave in. That's what Tracy Morgan does. He wasn't stalking He Bruce. forces her himself on her. He literally forces himself on her until she caves in. You do not see what's wrong with that. I see what's wrong with that. I, I think I think that's not exactly how it went down in the movie. I it is how it went down in the movie. I haven't seen Temptation. I need to see Temptation. I'm not talking about Temptation. I'm talking about this movie. Was what? that Tracy Morgan? That was Tracy Morgan. Oh, okay. Uh, but how, okay, so evaluate what I'm talking about here a little bit. One of the main char one of the main characters is a big old black woman and uh, who gets continuously uh, 
stalked or slash approached by Tracy Morgan who plays this like overly obsessed uh, guy who has a big crush on her and is not subtle about it in any way whatsoever. And towards the very end of the movie, after uh, one of the girl's uh, sons run away to deal with her, fa uh, to look for his father, basically, uh, Tracy Morgan takes her and her, her three kids back to her place, and then proceeds to try, uh, force, forcibly kiss her over and over again, until she finally stops saying no, and then they start making out. If I need to explain what's wrong with that, there is a problem. Mm hmm and this, this is a continuous theme theme of Tyler Perry movies, and that really bothers me. Is I, he, I don't think he understands how people actually work. Hmm. I haven't seen enough Tyler Perry movies to know. Like that. I've only I'll seen take a, your word for it. I've only seen a f couple, like a few, maybe like one Medea movie on accident. Mm -hmm. But uh, on accident, <laughs> on accident, my cousins came over. It was a long story. And by that you mean you walked down the street to Redbox and rented it the day it came out. <sighs> you're killing me, man. Twice. You're, you're just. Stop poking the bear, man. <laughs> Stop poking the bear. <laughs> but it's like, I look at the behavior of his characters here, and I'm like, I'm comparing it to the show Parenthood, which, if you haven't seen it, is, in my opinion, one of the best shows on television. Because mm -hmm. there again, it deals with, like, a lot of the issues are talked about here are talked about on that show. And it's done ten times better, because it's done by, like, writers who at least have some genuine knowledge of how people and emotions work. Mm -hmm. And you have actors who can actually deliver it convincingly. Kid actors, too. Very, very talented actors. And it's like, it just, it has a, and it just, all the emotions feel real. It feels raw. And it feels like something like, like legitimately happened. Here, you don't have any of that. There's no tact. There's no real understanding of how people work, of how emotions work. I'm not saying the material isn't there. There are parts like, in the right hands, this could work. But a lot of cases, it's, it's just cliche after cliche after cliche, and it just gets obnoxious and annoying, and it, just, it, it bothered me, because, like, that's not how people work. This isn't how people behave. People don't do this. Like, if you want to talk about what it's like to be a single mom, fine. I support it wholeheartedly. Explore that. But give it some fucking class. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I know what you mean. I have a feeling you don't agree with me. No, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. And I think that, that you, the parenthood is a completely different take on the situation, and that sometimes you need different takes on the situation, and I think by all means Tyler Perry should be allowed to approach the subject and do what he wants with it. So it may not be the exact approach you were looking for, but I think it was a solid movie. It, it, it didn't bore me. I think it flowed along really, really nicely, especially while ha juggling six different plot lines, or five different plot lines. And I think it was just a solid movie. You know, it is a sensitive subject matter uh, to bring up in a Tyler Perry movie, but I was, it was solid. Like, I w as, as a teacher myself, I wouldn't give it a failing grade. i give it a D. A D? Okay. It's not as bad as some, like, it's not as bad as Temptation, for sure. Okay. Like, there were words where it's like, okay, this is tolerable. Uh-huh. Okay. So I was like, I'm not saying it's a, okay, it's kind of a piece of garbage, but it's not, it's, it's not the worst that I've seen. <laughs> But at the same time, it's like I just feel like for this source, this subject matter, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying there's there's only one way to do this, only one way to approach it. Mm -hmm. I I encourage multiple approaches to it. I just don't like. I don't feel like this was a good one. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, this subject, like I said before, I don't know much about, mm -hmm. so I can't speak for personal experience in that regard. However, mm -hmm. that being said, I don't think Tyler Perry is a person to do that either. Mm -hmm. Okay, I disagree with you. I think Tyler Perry should be allowed to do whatever he wants. Should be, it's he can do whatever he wants. It's more a matter of should he. Like I'm more of the opinion, like if you don't, if you should not talk about things you don't know enough about. Mm -hmm. This is a case of like you probably like if unless you like talk to people who have been through those experiences or have been through that experience yourself, and you have no or you have just no frame of reference. Don't try to talk about shit you know nothing about. Mm -hmm. This is, quite frankly, something a lot of several celebrities can learn from. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like, just people, in general, just, just shut the fuck up about things they know nothing about. In general. Not just Tyler Perry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this suddenly become a very big social speech. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready for it. But it's just, I just don't feel like... It's like, it's most things world. it's not a black and white issue. There's so much going on to it, and I feel like... It kind of portrays it as kind of a black and white issue, because, like, 
all the husbands and all the like the fathers of these kids are all just these evil bastard people. But all mm -hmm. the women are just pure angels. And I'm not saying, of course, in some cases, of course, that actually happens. Mm -hmm. No argument there. That being said, we also get the white person accusing the black woman of robbing something. Mm -hmm. We have males talking about yeah, accusing other female journalists of male bashing. Mm -hmm. We get the the guy who looks like a young Jim Carrey from Liar Liar oh, yeah. doing the I'm obviously the scumbag douchebag that's going to take your job, which mm -hmm. an other subplot. Ugh, that really pissed me off, too. Because, okay, what happens is one of the, the white women there is like a lawyer, is like a lawyer at a firm or something like that. Mm -hmm. And she's trying to get a partner, but the other guy who wants the part two, who's just so obviously a scumbag that it's amazing that anyone would give him the time of day because he's supposed to be like a fucking lawyer. He's not settled for shit. So... <laughs> So every time it's like, well, I, she's like, well, I work hard for my job. And he goes, yeah, but you have a daughter. And then he makes a face like, hmm, yeah, that's trouble. <laughs> hmm, yeah, that's a problem. Hmm. But I have all the free time in the world because I have no life besides this job. Hmm. Uh. Yeah. And it's just if that wasn't ha like hammered in but, long enough. Let me finish. As if it wasn't in long enough when her when her troubled daughter does come into her office and like the head of the uh, head of the office sees her with the daughter's like, oh, you have more important things to do. Oddly enough, he was actually one of the more understanding guys in the cast. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, you have more important stuff that we'll talk later. And then as if it wasn't ham home enough that he was obviously the douchebag, he walks in the doorway and goes, oh, you have your daughter. Hmm. And then walks away. The big stupid grin. I was like, oh, you no subtlety, mm -hmm. none, none whatsoever. Yeah. And that annoyed the shit out of me. But that little subplot was necessary because that it showed the woman that she didn't want that promotion, but she wanted to move to a different firm that was going to give her a little more freedom. That was and... a freaking cliff note at the end of the movie. But that was perfect. Like that was like the thing is like she was stressed out and obviously wasn't enjoying and wasn't clicking with the job that she was in, and that was like the thing that forced her along to a new firm, so which you... gave her a little more freedom. Again, if you want to throw in that plot line, fine. Why can't you cut the douchebag out? Why was he necessary? Comic relief. Because Tyler Perry is such a master of comedy. Yeah. Master. I see what you're doing. No, no, I'm serious. <laughs> I'm serious. Um, so how about the trailers? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take this as a victory on my half. <laughs> That's not a victory. You know what a victory on your half is going to be is when you take all those coins to Coinstar. Um, <laughs> quick story, I actually cleaned my room once. Not that I do it did it once, but like um, <laughs> yeah, once I, when, long, I throw, long time when ago. I, when I when I uh, I never like when I very pay in bills, I never like I'm the type of person like my mom who will be like, oh, you know, the, my total's like three ten. I'm going to take out three dollars or five and a dime. Like I'm never that kind of person. I'll be like, here, just give me change. <laughs> So I do, they take that change and I like throw it on my desk or like on my floor and then I just take all my change and one time I paid for round trip tickets to LA just on the change that I have <laughs> on my desk. Nice. Alright, so trailers. Yeah. Uh, the first one we walked in on because we were late was uh, Cuban Fury, which uh, I think you were in the bathroom for that one. Yeah, so I know nothing about. So the next one we got was uh, Cheezer Sav... Uh, fuck, what's his name? Cesar Chavez? Cesar Chavez, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, which was oddly enough, because that's coming up next. Uh, Cesar Chavez is coming. Monday. Monday. I can't talk today. I'm a little sick. Uh, Both start bugging me, so if I floor words, that's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. Even though I've been just yelling in this car for the past 20 minutes, give or take. Uh, I don't know, it looks kind of like your standard motivational speaker kind of movie. Mm -hmm. So. So it's, it's always like the person who stands up for the oppression, the big corporate guys who want to put the man down and all that shit. You've seen it before. I mean, mm -hmm. if it's done well, it could be done well, but I don't know. Just yeah. can't wait and see on that one. Uh, next one. We, oh, God, I forgot about this one. Uh, no, I'm thinking Make Your Move. Uh, which one was Get On Up? I forgot which one that Oh, that was the one about the James, dancing. Brown. Uh, James Brown. Oh, James Brown. Yeah, that's that's going to be a good movie. Uh, that, actually looked, that actually looked like it had potential. Yeah, he had, he had an interesting life. Uh, I don't know much about James Brown. I don't follow musicians that closely, mm -hmm. so I don't know much. I know, of course, I've heard James Brown music before. Yeah. Everyone has. Crazy, crazy life. That'd be a, that's gonna be a good movie. So I'm, I'm optimistic about that one. That one looks decent. Looks like it has a good lead cast. So let's hope. Uh, speaking of uh, lead, good lead cast, we, the next one was Haunted House Two, which uh, you know looks just looks amazing because the first one really needed a sequel. Yeah, I'm not a fan of scary movies. Scary movies really scare me. So. 
Do you mean like the scary movie franchise, or because that scares me too? But no, for different reasons. all scary movies scare me. But this is like, a, this, even like even like the soft like PG thirteen. So this is even like a scare, this is like a spoof on crappy either scary way, movies. Either way, either way. Really, like, with the yeah, chicken just, and everything, just the elements. Yeah, that would that would freak me out. So I mean, granted, that chick was kind of scary for different uh, reasons. I would but lose sleep over it. Really, like yeah. Gabriel Iglesias doing Mexican humor. Yeah, I would lose sleep over it. Wow, really? That. But even it's, a, it's a comedy. Because no, because I watched one of the first scary movies and it had like scary movie elements, even though it was a comedy, and it still like bugged me. So I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it, dude. We need to toughen you up, man. Yeah. Put so you in the military do. anyway. Uh, just <laughs> start playing drills in the morning. Next one we got was uh, make your move. That looks good. Um, it, I don't know. I'm a big fan of Vegas. So. Oh, there you go. That's a good reason. All right. Uh, actually, I actually meant that legitimately. That wasn't sarcasm. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, it looks like if you've seen any of those, uh, what, what was that franchise that had like three sequels too many? Hangover. Uh, well, that too. Well, that uh, was two sequels. Uh, two um, sequels. Uh, yeah, the first one shouldn't happened either. But, uh, the first one, really? I thought it was okay. But the first one was incredibly solid. I liked it alright, but I didn't think it was great. Uh, the sequels are, yeah, crap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, Get Up, what's it called? It was like the, all the dancing movies. Oh, Step Up. Step Up. That's what I'm thinking of. It basically was like one of those, except now there's a rope, like a kind of a cheesy romance element mm -hmm. with apparently uh, immigration for J Japan, which I didn't. Oh, know sorry. I thought we were talking about the Vegas one. That's later. That's the sequel one. The other one. Sorry. There's, oh yeah. Yeah, dancing movie. Yeah, dancing movie. The one where it's like it's just like, there's here's cult like uh, digital, it's basically just a dancing <laughs> montage with a very loose plot point thrown in for mm -hmm. no apparent reason. Yeah. So, you kind of know what you're getting out of that one. No real surprise. Uh, then we have Draft Day. That looks great. With uh, Kevin Costner. That looks uh, that looks awesome. I know it, I know it has potential because Kevin Costner actually smiled in this trailer. So, yeah. I was like, well, that's new it's for about, Kevin Costner. It's about football. And I'm excited for that. Uh, Let's go see that. We probably will. I mean, people who well, know me I... know that football is not exactly my thing because I know nothing about it. <laughs> it mm -hmm. I know it's like, that's that's where they throw the ball uh, to get to the thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's about all I know. Yeah, let's go see that before I leave. Uh, really yeah, so that was, and then the last one was when you were thinking of, which was Think Like a Man too. Yeah. Which, was there, was there an original one? I didn't think I ever heard of I, Think Like yeah, a Man. Yeah, there was. It just didn't take place in Vegas, I don't think. Uh, I'm a big fan of Vegas. I'll go see anything Vegas related. Uh, yeah, my... For me, I just don't understand why, as grown people, they feel like they need to uh, compete with the girls. Because, mm -hmm. like, are we not in middle school anymore? <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were kind of like grown-ass adults and we could care less what they do in their mm -hmm. own free time. Why do we feel any... I don't know, whatever. But uh, I'm overthinking probably a little too much. Either way, it looks kind of like a dumb comedy with in Vegas, so there's that. Uh, so, after that big lawn heat explosion. Uh, I apologize for that, by the way, everybody. Uh, final thoughts? Um, we're going to disagree about the movie, but I think it's a, it's, you know, it is, I'm not going to say it's the greatest movie in the entire world, because it isn't, but it very, it, it tackles a delicate subject in a very comedic and lighthearted way, and does a good job of telling six different stories in less than two hours, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I will concede that the plot lines were inter interweaved well. That's about all I'm really willing to give it, though. So, uh, I feel like if you're looking... Progress. I feel like if you're looking for something to discuss these difficult matters, you could do much better than this. Like, I feel like, like I said, go watch Parenthood. That does the same exact thing, except ten times better. There's a 525 showing if you're interested. You're killing me here, man. And if after that, if you still don't have it down, there's like an 8 o'clock showing. Maybe even 11 o'clock. I'd say let's go back and marathon this thing. <laughs> you're killing me, Smalls. You're killing me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's all I got. So, uh, we'll be back next day or so with, I think, The Wind Rises, and then I think we're checking out Need for Speed. So, yeah. Are you going to enjoy any of this? Uh, Wind Rises looks pretty good. That's a Miyazaki film, so. Oh, good. So, hopefully I have enjoyment there. Need for Speed, probably not. <laughs> but, uh, that's okay, because what is Misery Love Company? So, oh, I'm having Raj and Grant me on that one. I noticed, okay, it's Livery Man, I wasn't paying much attention to you, because um, <laughs> we had that whole exchange where I looked and I thought you and I were on the same page during a really tense scene, and you just like not on the same page as me. <laughs> but I, I noticed your expressions, and I like watched you. <laughs> and I thoroughly think that you get enjoyment out of seeing bad movies. Like, there was this whole, like, <laughs> 
I don't get this and I don't like it, but there is a little bit of smiling and I think you thoroughly enjoy it. <laughs> because it's mostly, I like it's like, did he really just fucking say that? I think, I think you like, I think you like it. Oh, it surely explain why I'm a glutton for punishment. Me at this point, I've just done it so many fucking times that it just stops facing me as yeah, much as it used to. I think you like it. Thank <laughs> you, owe Tyler Perry, an apology note. I make no apologies for, should, for bashing I think Tyler you Perry. We should bake him cupcakes. We're gonna end it there. I'll bake him cupcakes.